Introduction In the heart of one of the world's most vibrant and bustling metropolises, the city that never sleeps, there lived an unassuming man named John Mitchell. His life, like that of millions in this urban jungle, was a symphony of routine, responsibility, and the relentless pursuit of purpose. John's story, devoid of fantastical elements and extraordinary adventures, serves as a powerful testament to the extraordinary found within the ordinary. Each day, John's alarm clock summoned him from the cocoon of sleep, piercing through the comforting darkness of his small, modest apartment in the borough of Queens. He was a man of routine, the kind who found solace in the predictable rhythms of life. As he stretched and rose from his humble bed, he had no inkling that this particular Monday morning would herald the beginning of a chapter in his life that he could never have foreseen. The city streets, teeming with life and ambition, welcomed John into their chaotic embrace. He joined the throngs of commuters, all part of a symphony of synchronized chaos. The subway station was a maze of hurried footsteps and the murmur of conversations, punctuated by the constant whirring of approaching and departing trains. John, a seasoned traveler of this underground world, navigated it with a sense of resigned determination. His destination was the epitome of corporate mundanity in an office nestled amidst the towering skyscrapers of Manhattan. There, in the heart of the financial district, he sat in his modest cubicle, a small cog in the immense machinery of a faceless accounting firm. Day after day, he delved into spreadsheets, meticulously balancing budgets and helping clients navigate the labyrinthine world of taxation. It was a job that paid the bills but rarely stirred his soul. Lunchtime offered a temporary respite from the monotony. John would escape the fluorescent-lit confines of his office to a nearby park, a serene oasis amid the concrete canyons of the city. Here, he found solace on a weathered bench, sharing his simple meal with pigeons and squirrels. It was a quiet moment of reflection amid the ceaseless rush of New York life. Evenings ushered in a semblance of excitement as John met his close-knit group of friends at a neighborhood bar. In the dimly lit space, they swapped stories of the day, exchanged laughter, and occasionally engaged in spirited games of darts. It was here that John's life found a modicum of color amidst the grayscale of his daily existence. On weekends, John indulged in his passion for photography. Armed with his trusty camera, he embarked on journeys of exploration within the city, seeking beauty in its most unexpected corners. The camera lens became his window to a world beyond numbers and ledgers, offering a creative outlet that breathed life into his otherwise predictable existence. Yet, in the midst of this routine, John's life was about to take a dramatic turn. A phone call, one seemingly innocuous evening, would shake the very foundations of his existence. The voice on the other end, that of his physician, delivered news that would forever alter the trajectory of his life. It was a diagnosis, a label that carried with it the weight of uncertainty and the inevitability of change. As John embarked on a journey marked by uncertainty and resilience, his story became a microcosm of the human experience itself. It revealed that within the tapestry of daily life, where routines may appear monotonous and the days blend seamlessly into one another, there exists a profound capacity for adaptation, growth, and the unwavering spirit to overcome. John's tale reminds us that in the most ordinary of lives, there lies the extraordinary waiting to be discovered. Chapter 1. The Awakening In the hushed moments before dawn, John Mitchell's alarm clock burst to life, 
its harsh electronic blare shattering the tranquility of his bedroom. His groggy hand reached out to silence the cacophonous intruder, a reluctant sentinel to the daily grind that awaited him. It was Monday morning, the proverbial battleground upon which the skirmishes of his life's routines were waged. John, a man of disciplined habits, rose from his bed with the same precision he applied to his work. The room was bathed in a pale, grayish light filtering through the slats of his blinds, hinting at the promise of a new day. As he pushed aside his covers, he could feel the chill of the apartment, a reminder that fall was slowly yielding to the approaching chill of winter. The apartment itself was a study in minimalism. A bed with neatly tucked sheets, a small wooden desk adorned with the tools of his trade, a calculator, a notepad, and a laptop, and a sparsely furnished living area. John had always found comfort in simplicity, a reflection of his character. In the small, spotless kitchenette, he set a pot of coffee brewing, the rich aroma mingling with the scent of his freshly laundered shirt. While he waited for the coffee to percolate, he gazed out of his apartment window. The view was unremarkable, just a neighboring building, but it held a certain charm for him. It was a constant in a city that seemed to change its face every day. Dressed in his usual attire, a crisp white shirt, a conservative tie, and charcoal grey slacks, John headed into the bathroom to prepare for the day ahead. The bathroom mirror reflected back a face that had seen thirty-five years of life, a face marked by the passage of time but not devoid of a certain quiet determination. The city beyond his window was already coming alive. The distant honking of horns and the muffled hum of traffic told him that the world was in motion. He often found solace in knowing that he was but one cog in this vast machine of existence, his daily life a microcosm of the countless lives that converged in the heart of New York. With a cup of steaming coffee in hand, he paused by his bookshelf, a small but cherished collection of novels and photography books. It was here that he found refuge from the monotony of numbers and ledgers, diving into the worlds crafted by authors and artists, if only for fleeting moments. As the minutes ticked away, John gathered his things and made his way to the front door. The day had officially begun, and the city beckoned. Stepping into the hallway, he locked the door behind him, a ritual that signified the start of another day in the life of John Mitchell, a man who thrived in the ordinary and found meaning in the everyday routines of his existence. Chapter 2 The Commute The moment John stepped out of his modest apartment, the energy of the city enveloped him. It was a living, breathing entity, a creature that never truly slept. The echoing footsteps of neighbors in the hallways and the distant hum of traffic outside his building were constant reminders of this. His morning ritual had begun, and he walked briskly down the bustling streets of Queens toward the subway station. The sidewalks were already teeming with people, each lost in their own world. Some clutched steaming cups of coffee, while others rushed past, their earphones drowning out the urban symphony. The subway station loomed ahead, its entrance marked by a mosaic of advertisements, each vying for the attention of the hurried commuters. John swiped his metro card and joined a throng of people descending into the subterranean world of the New York City subway system. The descent was swift, a plunge into the belly of the beast. The platform was a bustling sea of humanity. 
People of all walks of life stood shoulder to shoulder, united in their collective quest to reach their respective destinations. A smorgasbord of accents and languages filled the air, a testament to the city's diversity. The arrival of the train was heralded by a rush of air, and the collective shuffle toward the platform's edge grew more pronounced. John found a spot near a pillar and settled in for the journey ahead. The train, a metallic behemoth adorned with graffiti and advertisements, screeched to a halt. As the doors slid open, the passengers surged forward. John squeezed himself into a corner of the subway car, sharing his space with a diverse cast of characters. A businessman in a tailored suit perused the Wall Street Journal, a musician with a guitar case slung over his shoulder strummed softly, and a young student engrossed in a textbook barely noticed the world around her. The subway car, a microcosm of the city itself, came to life. Overhead, a garbled announcement announced the next station. The rhythmic clattering of wheels on tracks, the intermittent jolts, and the muted conversations merged into a symphony of urban existence. It was a dance of proximity and personal space, a daily choreography that every New Yorker had mastered. John settled into the familiar rhythm of his commute. He pulled out his phone, his lifeline to the digital world, and began scrolling through emails and news articles. The minutes ticked by, and the stations blurred into a seamless procession of underground landmarks, Queensboro Plaza, Grand Central, Times Square. With each passing station, the composition of the passengers shifted, reflecting the city's evolving demographics. The ebb and flow of commuters was a reminder that the city was a living, breathing organism, its pulse felt most acutely in these metal arteries. As John stopped neared, he stowed his phone and prepared to disembark. The train pulled into the station, and he joined the river of people streaming toward the exit. Emerging from the subway, he was greeted by the iconic skyline of Manhattan a sight that never failed to inspire a sense of wonder. The commute was a daily ordeal, a crucible of patience and fortitude, but for John, it was also a reminder of his place in this vast, pulsating city. It was a testament to the resilience of New Yorkers, who navigated this labyrinth of tunnels and tracks with a quiet determination, day in and day out. Chapter 3 the office. The imposing glass and steel edifice of John's workplace towered above him as he emerged from the subway station. This towering behemoth was an emblem of corporate America, housing one of the city's largest accounting firms. The lobby, a cavernous expanse of marble and glass, was a testament to opulence. Stepping into the elevator, John found himself surrounded by colleagues and strangers alike. The elevator was a silent space, save for the soft hum of the elevator music that played in the background. Each floor it ascended represented a step deeper into the heart of the corporate world. As the elevator doors opened on the 15th floor, John stepped out into a sea of cubicles. His workspace, like those of his colleagues, was a pristine tableau of orderliness. The grey carpet, the fluorescent lights overhead, and the rows upon rows of cubicles gave the impression of a meticulously orchestrated maze. John's cubicle was his sanctuary within this labyrinth. It was marked by a few personal touches, a family photo, a potted plant, and a motivational quote pinned to the wall. His desk was impeccably organized, 
with stacks of neatly arranged papers and a computer screen that awaited his touch. The office itself was a hive of activity. Colleagues hurried about, clutching cups of coffee and documents, their voices a subdued murmur punctuated by the occasional phone ring. The constant clicking of keyboards and the low hum of office machinery created a soundscape that was both comforting and monotonous. John settled into his chair, donned his reading glasses, and began the daily ritual of sifting through spreadsheets and financial statements. His work revolved around numbers, their precision and predictability providing a semblance of order in a world that often felt chaotic. He was a diligent and skilled accountant, well versed in the art of financial analysis and taxation. As the hours passed, John's cubicle became a cocoon of concentration. He fielded phone calls from clients, offered counsel on financial matters, and diligently recorded transactions. The work was demanding, a test of his analytical acumen and attention to detail. The lunch hour offered a brief respite from the relentless hum of office life. John joined his colleagues in the break room, where conversations ranged from office gossip to weekend plans. It was a momentary escape from the digital spreadsheets and the sea of numbers that defined his daily life. Afternoons in the office were often a test of endurance. The clock on the wall seemed to tick ever slower as the day wore on. Meetings, emails, and deadlines loomed like spectres, demanding his attention. Yet, amidst the relentless demands of his job, John found a sense of purpose in helping clients navigate the complexities of their financial affairs. As the workday neared its end, John wrapped up his tasks, shut down his computer, and prepared to leave the office. The office, a place of labor and routine, would stand silent until the next day's sunrise. It was a reminder that even in the most mundane of environments, human lives converged to create a tapestry of productivity and purpose. Exiting the building, John felt the cool evening air on his face. The city outside was a stark contrast to the sterile confines of the office, a vibrant, living entity that thrived beyond the confines of glass and steel. He made his way back to the subway station, a weary commuter returning home, ready to embrace the comfort of routine and the prospect of a new day in the office tomorrow. Chapter 4 Lunchtime Escape High noon found John emerging from the fluorescent-lit cocoon of his office building, stepping out into the bustling streets of Manhattan. The cacophony of the city welcomed him with open arms, a sharp contrast to the structured monotony of his morning in the office. In his hand, John clutched a brown paper bag containing a simple turkey sandwich and a small container of homemade potato salad. He had always been a creature of habit when it came to his lunch. As he navigated the crowded sidewalks, he felt a sense of liberation a brief escape from the confines of cubicles and calculators. His destination was a nearby park, a hidden gem amidst the concrete canyons of the city. The park was an oasis of greenery, a refuge from the relentless hustle and bustle of Manhattan. Towering trees offered a canopy of shade, and the scent of blooming flowers intermingled with the aroma of street vendor hot dogs. John settled onto a weathered bench beneath a sprawling oak tree, a spot he had claimed as his own over the years. The bench faced a small pond where ducks glided lazily on the water, oblivious to the urban chaos beyond the park's boundaries. 
It was a serene scene, a reminder that pockets of tranquility existed even in the most frenetic of environments. He unwrapped his sandwich and took a bite, savoring the simple pleasure of his homemade meal. For a brief moment, the taste of roasted turkey and crisp lettuce transported him away from the world of tax codes and balance sheets. It was a daily ritual, a chance to reset and refocus. John often used this time to people watch, a pastime he found endlessly fascinating. The park was a microcosm of the city's diversity. Business professionals in suits chatted on their phones, children laughed as they fed the ducks, and elderly couples held hands as they strolled along the winding paths. The park also served as a canvas for various street performers. Musicians strummed guitars, artists sketched portraits, and a mime delighted children with his silent antics. John found solace in the artistry of these individuals, a reminder that creativity thrived even in the most unexpected corners of life. After finishing his lunch, John reclined on the bench, his gaze drifting upward toward the sky. Above, the skyscrapers formed a jagged skyline, a testament to human ingenuity and ambition. The city was a living, breathing entity, and he was just one of its countless inhabitants. As the minutes ticked away, John savored the solitude and simplicity of this midday escape. It was a balm for his soul, a reminder that amidst the relentless demands of his job and the ceaseless rush of the city, there were moments of respite and reflection. Lunchtime in the park was a reminder that even in the heart of the urban jungle, pockets of peace and beauty could be found, if one took the time to seek them out. Chapter 5 After Hours the sun had long dipped below the towering skyscrapers when John's workday finally came to an end. Emerging from his office building, he joined the throngs of New Yorkers who spilled onto the streets, their expressions a mix of relief and weariness. It was the time of day when the city transformed, shedding its business facade for a more relaxed and vibrant persona. John, like clockwork, made his way to a neighborhood bar that had become a second home to him. It was an unassuming place, tucked away on a corner street, its neon sign flickering to life as dusk settled in. The bar was a sanctuary, a place where he could shed the trappings of his work life and reconnect with friends who shared his journey. His friends, a tight-knit group of individuals from various walks of life, were already gathered around a table in a dimly lit corner. They greeted John with hearty smiles and a chorus of playful ribbing. There was Mark, the affable IT specialist with a penchant for corny jokes, Sarah, the fiery journalist with a passion for storytelling, and Alex, the school teacher with an infectious enthusiasm for life. The bar was a place of camaraderie and conversation. The clinking of glasses and the hum of laughter filled the air as they swapped stories of their day. It was a hodgepodge of experiences, workplace triumphs, frustrating commutes, and the occasional bizarre encounter with a stranger on the subway. As the evening wore on, they engaged in their favorite pastime a game of darts. The worn dartboard, marked with years of use, was a centerpiece of the bar. John, Sarah, and Mark took turns hurling darts, each shot accompanied by a chorus of cheers and groans. The game was less about skill and more about the joy of competition and camaraderie. Between rounds of darts, the conversations flowed freely. They delved into deeper topics, dreams, aspirations, and the challenges of navigating the complexities of adulthood. 
The bar was a space where they could be themselves, shedding the personas they wore during office hours. As the night deepened, the group ventured beyond the confines of the bar. They explored the city's culinary offerings, hopping from one hole in the wall eatery to another. It was a culinary adventure, a chance to savor the diverse flavors that the city had to offer. The evening's escapades often led them to unexpected places, impromptu dance floors in crowded bars, impulsive karaoke sessions, and even a midnight stroll through the city's parks. The city, with its dazzling lights and endless possibilities, served as the backdrop for their after-hours adventures. As the clock neared the witching hour, John and his friends bid their farewells, promising to reconvene at the same bar the following evening. They parted ways, each retreating into the embrace of the city that had become their shared canvas of experiences. For John, these after-hours gatherings were more than just a way to unwind, they were a lifeline, a reminder that amidst the rigors of daily life, there existed a circle of friends who provided support, laughter, and a sense of belonging. It was in these after-hours moments that the bonds of friendship were strengthened, and the trials and tribulations of daily life were made more bearable. Chapter 6 Hobbies and Passions While John's weekdays were dominated by the structured routine of the office, his weekends were a canvas for his true passion, photography. As the city's heartbeat slowed down for a collective exhale, he embraced the opportunity to explore its hidden gems through the lens of his camera. Early on Saturday mornings, John would don his worn but beloved photography gear, a trusty DSLR camera slung around his neck and a backpack filled with lenses, filters, and a tripod. He was a man on a mission, ready to capture the beauty hidden within the urban landscape. One of his favorite spots was Central Park, a sprawling oasis nestled amidst the towering skyscrapers. John often arrived at the park before the sun had fully risen, allowing him to witness the ethereal transformation of dawn. The soft glow of the rising sun turned the city's concrete and steel into a canvas of warm hues. With each click of his camera's shutter, John sought to freeze these moments in time. He photographed the serene reflections on the park's lakes, the vibrant blooms in its gardens, and the candid interactions of park-goers. Through his lens, he revealed a side of the city that many overlooked in their daily rush. John's passion for photography extended beyond landscapes. He had a keen eye for the unexpected, the overlooked, and the ordinary. He reveled in capturing the intricate details of architectural marvels, the intricate carvings on historic buildings, the play of light and shadows on contemporary skyscrapers, and the contrast of old and new coexisting harmoniously. Street photography was another facet of his craft that he adored. The bustling streets of the city were his stage, and its inhabitants were his subjects. John would often wander through different neighborhoods, capturing candid moments of strangers as they went about their daily lives, a newspaper vendor flipping through the morning news, a street performer captivating a captivated audience, or a couple sharing a stolen moment on a park bench. The city's vibrant cultural scene was another muse for John. He frequented art galleries, museums, and live performances, each experience feeding his creative spirit. His camera became a tool for interpreting the emotions and stories embedded in the city's artistic expressions. Photography, for John, was more than a hobby, it was a means of self-expression. 
It allowed him to view the world through a unique lens, to appreciate the beauty in the mundane, and to share his perspective with others. His photography not only captured the essence of the city but also provided a creative outlet that added depth and richness to his daily life. As the sun set on his weekend photography adventures, John would often find himself back at his modest apartment, reviewing the day's captures on his computer. Each image told a story, a fragment of the city's narrative as seen through his eyes. It was a reminder that even in the most routine of daily lives, there existed opportunities for creativity, exploration, and the pursuit of passion. Chapter 7 Unexpected News One evening, as the amber glow of streetlights filtered through John's apartment window, he found himself engrossed in his photography edits. The day had been productive and he was contentedly sorting through his latest captures when the shrill ring of his phone disrupted his solitude. The caller ID displayed the name of his physician, Dr. Patel John's heart quickened, a flicker of anxiety coursing through him. He answered with a nervous, hello, and Dr. Patel's somber tone immediately sent a chill down his spine. John, Dr. Patel began, I'm afraid I have some news. The results from your recent medical tests have come in, and I need to discuss them with you. Time seemed to stand still as Dr. Patel explained the diagnosis, words like chronic illness and ongoing treatment hanging heavy in the air. John listened in stunned silence his mind racing to process the unexpected news. It felt as though the ground had shifted beneath him, and the life he had known was now a fragile construct. The diagnosis presented an uncertain path forward, one filled with challenges and adjustments that John had never anticipated. Thoughts of his daily routines, his photography expeditions, and his cherished time with friends was suddenly overshadowed by the daunting prospect of managing a chronic condition. As he hung up the phone, John found himself seated on his couch, the room cast in a melancholic stillness. The photographs he had been editing lay forgotten on the coffee table, their vibrant colors now a stark contrast to the gray uncertainty that enveloped his thoughts. In the days that followed, John began the process of coming to terms with his diagnosis. He researched treatment options, consulted with specialists, and made the necessary lifestyle adjustments. The routines he had once found comfort in were now intertwined with doctor's appointments, medication schedules, and moments of introspection about his future. His friends, upon learning of his diagnosis, rallied around him. They provided a support system, offering both emotional encouragement and practical assistance. Their presence in his life became even more meaningful as he navigated the complexities of managing his health. Photography, once a cherished escape, took on a new significance. It became a means of processing his emotions, a way to channel the uncertainty and fear into a visual narrative. John's camera lens captured not only the external world but also his internal journey, documenting the resilience and determination with which he faced his condition. Chapter 7 marked a turning point in John's life, a reminder that the unexpected could intrude upon even the most well-structured daily routines. It was a testament to his strength and the unwavering support of his friends as he embarked on a new chapter defined by resilience, adaptation, 
and the courage to confront life's unexpected challenges head-on. Chapter 8, Resilience In the wake of the life-altering diagnosis, John embarked on a journey marked by resilience and determination. It was a path filled with uncertainties, but he refused to be defined solely by his chronic illness. Instead, he sought to redefine his daily life, drawing strength from the unwavering support of his friends and the resilience of the human spirit. One of his first steps was to create a structured routine that incorporated his treatment regimen. Medication schedules, dietary adjustments, and regular exercise became integral parts of his daily life. The routines he had once found comfort in now served as the framework for managing his health. John's friends played a crucial role in his journey. They attended doctor's appointments with him, offering moral support and acting as a source of comfort during difficult moments. Their unwavering presence was a testament to the power of friendship and the value of human connection in times of adversity. The city, too, played its part in John's resilience. The same streets that had once been a backdrop for his daily commute and weekend photography expeditions now became a source of inspiration. He found solace in the city's vibrant cultural scene, attending art exhibitions, concerts, and performances that lifted his spirits and reminded him of the beauty that existed beyond his diagnosis. Photography remained a constant in John's life, albeit with a new focus. His camera lens continued to capture the city's essence, but it also documented his personal journey of resilience. He photographed the medical equipment that had become a part of his daily routine, the hospital rooms that had witnessed his moments of vulnerability, and the faces of fellow patients who shared his struggle. Over time, John's resilience began to yield tangible results. His condition stabilized, and he gained a deeper understanding of his body and its needs. He embraced mindfulness practices that helped him manage stress and find moments of serenity amid the chaos of daily life. His friends, who had been by his side throughout his journey, marveled at his strength and determination. They saw in him a living embodiment of resilience a testament to the human capacity to adapt and thrive in the face of adversity. John's journey became an inspiration to those around him, a reminder that life's unexpected challenges could be met with courage and resilience. As the months turned into years, John's daily life evolved once more. He continued to work at his accounting job, but with a newfound perspective on the value of each day. He cherished his time with friends, savored his photography expeditions, and found meaning in the routines that had once felt mundane. Chapter 8 was not just a conclusion to John's story, it was a testament to the enduring power of resilience. It showcased the indomitable spirit of a man who had faced life's unexpected twists with courage and determination. Through his journey, John reminded us all that, in the face of adversity, resilience can be a beacon of hope, guiding us toward a future filled with purpose and strength.